If you've ever looked inside the owner's manual of a Toyota, Honda, Mazda, or Subaru sold in the United States and noticed that it tells you to use extremely thin oils like 0W16 or 0W20, yet the same exact engines overseas in Japan, Europe, or Australia are happily running on 5W30, 10W30, or even 0W40, then you're about to learn something that will change how you understand motor oil forever. Most drivers assume oil recommendations come directly from engineering decisions based on what's best for the long-term health of the engine. They assume the manufacturer chooses a viscosity that keeps wear low, controls temperature, protects against friction, and ensures reliability over hundreds of thousands of miles. But the uncomfortable truth, the one automakers rarely acknowledge openly, is that U.S. oil recommendations are chosen primarily to satisfy government fuel economy regulations, not to maximize engine longevity. What this means is that millions of American drivers are unknowingly running oil grades that the engine was never originally designed for, all because the U.S. government demands higher fuel economy numbers from automakers, forcing them into decisions that benefit efficiency tests at the cost of long-term durability. To understand how this happened, we need to look at how U.S. fuel economy laws work. The Corporate Average Fuel Economy, or CAFE, standards require each automaker to meet a minimum average miles per gallon target across its entire fleet of vehicles. If the fleet falls even slightly below the requirement, the fines can reach into the tens or even hundreds of millions of dollars. So automakers look for every possible advantage during fuel economy testing. One of the easiest, cheapest, and most convenient ways to boost fuel economy on paper is to switch the recommended oil from a a mid-weight viscosity like 5W30 to a much thinner oil like 0W16. Thinner oil reduces internal friction, allowing the engine to spin more freely during the EPA's standardized test cycles. The gain is small, often only 0.3 to 0.8 miles per gallon, but across millions of cars, this tiny gain can save an automaker enormous amounts of money in avoided penalties. This single regulatory pressure is the biggest reason why U.S. oil recommendations shifted dramatically downward over the last 15 years. But the same regulatory pressure does not exist in Japan, Europe, or Australia. Those regions prioritize different goals, engine durability, heat tolerance, long-term reliability, and holistic emissions measured under real-world conditions. As a result, the same engine overseas is allowed to use thicker, more protective oil. It's not that the Japan-built Toyota or the Europe-delivered Honda has different pistons, bearings, crankshaft, or tolerances. In most cases, the engines are assembled on the same production line using the same components. The difference is that overseas markets allow oil that protects the engine better in hot weather, during long drives, under heavy load, and as the engine ages. To see how dramatic this difference is, consider a few real-world examples. The Toyota 2.5-liter A25A engine, found in Camrys, RAV4s, and Lexus models, requires 0W16 in the United States. Toyota prints it in bold letters in every manual. Yet in Japan, this same engine is approved for 0W20, 0W30, and 5W30, depending on temperature and driving conditions. Australia, which has significantly hotter climate zones than most of the U.S., frequently uses 5W30 or 10W30 in the same engine. Honda's K-Series and early Earth Dreams engines are similar. U.S. models require 0W20, while European and Japanese versions use 5W30 for the same engine blocks. Mazda's Skyactiv G engines are perhaps the most striking example. U.S. manuals specify 0W20 only, but Mazda themselves in Japan approve 5W30 and 0W30 as the preferred grades for hot climates and high load driving. Subaru, well known for oil consumption issues in their FB engines, uses 0W20 in America, yet runs 5W30 as the primary oil in Japan. These aren't different engines, they are different priorities.
One of the biggest myths sold to U.S. consumers is that new engines were redesigned with tighter tolerances that require thinner oils. Automakers often imply that older engines from the 1990s needed thicker oil because they were loose or less precise, while modern engines are built around thin oils. But real teardown measurements from dozens of engines show that bearing clearances, piston to cylinder clearances, journal spacing, oil pump tolerances, and camshaft clearances have not significantly significantly changed in the last 20 years. Engineers have improved combustion efficiency, added GDI injection systems, strengthened pistons, and optimized cooling systems, but the core tolerances that determine lubrication needs are remarkably similar to engines that used 5W30 for decades. What changed was the regulatory environment, not the mechanical one. Because of these regulatory pressures, U.S. engines often experience more wear-related issues than their overseas counterparts. Mechanics regularly report timing chain stretch in Toyota A-Series engines around 120,000 miles when running 0W16 or 0W20, especially in hotter states. Subaru owners dealing with FA or FB engines often complain about oil consumption increasing drastically around 80,000 miles, a problem far less common in Japan where thick oils are used. Honda's 1.5-liter turbo oil dilution issue became infamous in the U.S. because thin oil combined with short drives and cold weather resulted in excessive fuel mixing with oil, thinning it even further. Over time, these engines develop varnish, increased bearing wear, turbocharger deposits, and VVT system noise. Meanwhile, in countries where the same engines run 5W30 or 5W40, mechanics report far fewer of these problems. Thin oils struggle in many real-world conditions, sustained high-speed driving, summer heat, towing, mountain driving, stop-and-go traffic, and especially GDI fuel dilution. Fuel dilution can reduce a 0W20 oil's effective viscosity to something like 0W14, which drastically lowers film strength. Thicker oils like 5W30 are far more resistant to viscosity loss under load. This is why overseas manufacturers adjust their recommendations for climate, because they know that high temperature requires thicker film strength to keep metal surfaces properly separated. Japan's oil charts frequently show 5W30 recommended for all temperatures above 30 degrees C, or 86 degrees Fahrenheit, while America gets a simple 0W20 year-round chart, because simplicity is better for EPA certification. In fact, many U.S. owners aren't told that Japan, Europe, and Australia allow multiple acceptable oil grades for the same vehicle. This gives mechanics and drivers a broad flexibility to adjust viscosity to climate, mileage, and driving style. The U.S. doesn't get this flexibility, not because it's unsafe, but because giving options might compromise standardized fuel economy testing. That's why some U.S. manuals quietly include a line saying 5W30 may be used if 0W20 is unavailable, not because the engine can't run it, but because admitting it openly could complicate regulatory compliance. Mechanics worldwide, including many in North America, know from experience that switching from 0W20 to 5W30 often reduces oil consumption, quiets timing chains, increases idle oil pressure, and improves high temperature stability. They see engines with 150,000 miles running significantly cleaner internally when thicker oil is used consistently. They also know that almost no turbocharged engines overseas use 0W20, yet the U.S. runs several turbo models on it purely because it benefits fuel economy tests. Turbo bearings spinning at up to 250,000 RPM need strong oil film stability that thin oil simply cannot provide under heavy load. High mileage is another major factor rarely mentioned in U.S. manuals. Once an engine reaches 80,000 to 100,000 miles, internal clearances widen naturally. Piston rings lose tension, valve stem seals wear, timing chains elongate slightly, and oil control rings gather carbon. Thin oil no longer provides the same level of protection because it flows too easily past worn components. Japan's maintenance culture acknowledges this openly. Older engines often move to 5W30 or 5W40 for better control and protection. The U.S., however, keeps recommending thin oil throughout the engine's life because changing the recommendation would affect fuel economy ratings. 
So what oil actually provides the best long-term protection? Based on hundreds of independent oil analyses, engine teardown inspections, and data from global service manuals, the consensus is clear. 5W30 Full Synthetic is the ideal all-around oil for longevity in most modern engines. It has enough cold flow capability to protect during startup, but enough high temperature viscosity to maintain film strength. For extremely hot climates like the southern U.S., Middle East, and Australia, 5W40 offers excellent high load protection. For new engines in cold climates, 0W20 is acceptable for break-in, but not ideal after 30,000 miles. Ultra-thin oils like 0W16 and 0W8 exist almost solely for meeting regulatory fuel tests. Drivers often ask if switching from 0W20 to 5W30 is safe. Not only is it safe, but in many cases it's beneficial. The oil pump in your engine is pressure-regulated and will simply bypass excess pressure. Bearings are designed to accept a range of viscosities. Overseas manuals approve 5W30 for the same engines. The tiny reduction in fuel economy, usually less than one mile per gallon, is the only downside. And this small loss in efficiency is exactly why automakers avoid printing thicker oil grades in U.S. manuals.